not lie. Okay, well, I gotta stagger my way back into here. <laughs> hey, if you could go back into time, what would you tell your 15? I just turned 16 then. I joined the army at 15. And, uh, but I'd have my 16th birthday, so I was probably 16 now. What am I now? 62. Who can do the math? Was that 46 years ago or something like that? There isn't much, really. What would I have listened to? I might have listened to a lot of things, and I got taken in a lot. Uh, one thing that I did just say to my own children recently was that uh, the one piece of advice I tried to give them was, and I'd give that guy as well, and I'll pass it on to you, if you can't listen, which is, it's better to be alone than to be with someone who asks you for one. Um, okay, any of my kids? I'm playing <laughs> kind of fast and loose with this. I'm not writing any more songs business. Uh, that I said, and um, I, uh, but anyway, maybe I'll come back in a minute. I need to thank some people that I'm really not in good shape, I'm afraid, folks, so excuse me. Excuse me. The Velcro on my leg braces is just like it's got no stickiness on it. I feel like I can wrap myself up in masking tapes. Hey, don't look like that. I'll get to the point. Um, oh, I want to wait this thing. Bear with me a second, Matt. Uh, any sticking left on this? thing straight for about a week now. <laughs> Aren't you glad this isn't sniffer vision or whatever they had in the 50s America trying to get people to go back to the movies? Because I can't take it off. My arms are not strong enough to lift my clothing off. I'm going to have to cut it off, I think. And I need to thank some people. It's been a strange day today. I can tell you, no one said it's been a strange day. And I've been blessed with a lot of kindness today. So, <clears throat> focus, man, focus, 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 focus. So the lady, I don't even know where I'm standing to here, the lady at um, uh, Penn Mill Hospital. Uh, I, you don't want to be dramatic and say you saved my life today, but I mean your kindness picking me up and um, get me into the wheelchair. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful to you. Um, I, I'm so sorry. I made a note and I was staring at your name badge trying to drill it into my mind so that I could mention you or just, I don't know where, but just tell someone about you. And I'm really sorry, but you'll know who you are. You know, it was to do with the um, the injection, and, uh, but just amazing, you know, I mean, you know, you should be on a doctor's salary and a doctor should be in the dockyard and over a water barrel. Um, so thank you for that, and Tony, a big shout out to you today. Uh, I mean, he's just a great guy. I mean, I owe him nothing. Sorry, he owes me nothing. I owe him something, <laughs> literally today, due to certain care walkers, care walkers, care, I'm so sorry, care workers wandering off with some of my money. Uh, but anyway, um, and uh, I've not mentioned him in any of my books. I don't know why, just because, you know, I've not seen him in two or three years, I guess, but... Uh, what is this stuck to me? It's a feather. A feather? Oh, a bit of cellar tape. I should put that in my pocket. You never know when you need it. So thank you for your kind offer, Tony. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. I'm too ill to do it. Uh, but it would be really nice. <laughs> I'm afraid music is beyond me, as you'll find out when I start singing. Um, oh, and um, the lady at the bank, uh, again, so kind, going out of your way. I explained the problem, I'm getting a manager and holding, 
holding your day up to do it. Um, again, as with the other three, I mean, your kindness is amazing. There's no results from it, though. So, um, the, uh, <laughs> so the lady at the hospital, it's not going to make any difference. I'm still going to die pretty soon. And Tony, it's a kind offer, but I can't play music anymore. And again, um, a lady from the bank. Again, I can't. I cannot make a new will out. Should I tell you something about a will? Cats UK offered me a free will. Okay. And that, this went on for months, in fact. Bank was forwards and emails. Oh, yeah, it's going to be sent out today from their agent. I'm not blaming Cancer UK. And then right at the very end, it was due to be posted that day. You know, the draft will be posted out here tonight, get two witnesses to sign it, and then it's all covered and your children are safe. Or your children's future is safe. And then at seven o'clock that night I got an email saying I've spoken to my manager. And because you wanted to say you bought and were a remote service, what, you only knew you were a remote service after 10 weeks? <gasps> uh, you know, I told you how ill I was at the start and how pressing it was, you know. And so we've, we've passed it over to someone else. And then, God bless Cancer UK, they were scrabbling around. And they said, we've found another solicitor in the area. And this other solicitor sent me an email. And uh, Cancer World at UK have um, put this on to you for doing a free will because you need an executor. This is all true. I might photograph the email if I ever get the use of my finger back and put it up there. This is all true, I said. I do need a will. But you're not very well. <laughs> I'm always just, I'm watering that down a little bit. So, um, because, of that, because we need to come and see you, there was a six minute drive away. So because we need to come out to you. I mean, how many people with terminal illnesses are healthy enough to, you know, <laughs> go traveling around? Anyway, the short story is, and, and they said, because there's an element of dementia, I'm about to cough, I do apologize. <coughs> um, there's a pertinent point coming up in just a second. I said, um, so they don't come out, and so my, my fee for this will, my free will, will be, <laughs> which I'm not covered for, but it's how it started, will be £800 plus VAT, plus, because your disease comes with neurological dementia, we need to establish you've got capacity, and that will be a further £500 plus VAT. Please let me know how you wish to proceed. Well. Here's the thing. So, but I would need capacity to say, yes, I instruct you to come out and do the will and give me a capacity test. Would I not? So, I, as I point out, the Cancer UK, my capacity isn't so bad that even in my state, I'm not smarter than any on the make solicitor. I don't mean that solicitor particularly on the make, I mean in general as a bunch they are. How did I get hold of that? Oh yeah, this lady from HSBC today. You've got to get hold of a solicitor. I mean, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it all. Here's a song. As I said, I'm not going to write any more new songs. I don't know if I'm going to get through this now. I could see the lyrics before I started rapping, getting away with my eyes, all watered and seized up, man. And uh, so I figure I've not broken my no more songs writing embargo in that. Man, I was just going to record this and get out of here. <laughs> I, um... So my daughter wrote a poem the other day and I wrote some extra verses to go with it. I'm, you know, your nine-year-old daughter will ask you if you'll help her write her poem. What are you going to do? Say no? Of course not. I never say no to my children. And um, I might say, how about we look at it this way? But no, just dismiss her ideas out of hand. Never. And um, what was the start of that sentence? I'm just talking to myself in any case. It's been that way for many a, a decade. And 
and um, and this is today, which I've been recording a lot lately. It's a song I wrote in '82, but stopped playing in '87. And um, but I wrote another four verses to go on to that uh, because of events that went on the road. And this one I've just done here now. It came to me a while back, a few days ago, and I wasn't certain. Like I can't do it, you know, I'm just festering away. That it's hard. People say to me, "How do you write songs so easily?" Uh, well, it's harder not to write a song because they just keep coming all the time. So many titles and phrases and stuff. What was the other one? Turn the K Love. I started writing a song called Turn the K Love in bed the other night. I had to let it go. Shame, really, but um, it was a blue song as well. Anyway, but so this is called It Ain't You, Babe, and I figure that since the title is a parallel of Bob Dylan's It Ain't Me, Babe, which is kind of how it came to me. I was listening to Bob Dylan saying a live version from 1984. Get yourself some CDs of the 1984 tour. Sadly, the worst CD of Bob Dylan's 1984 tour is the official live one. What he was playing, I don't know, Mick Taylor on guitar. Mick Taylor. Everyone's on the new Rolling Stones album by Mick Taylor. Why is that? Okay, um, have I got another platform kicking around here anywhere? I don't think I do. Okay. And this is a rarity for me. I've had to write the music down and I'm going to be playing it slow. It's called It Ain't You, Babe. And it's going to start in about <laughs> half an hour. <gasps> or now, one of the two. Speed. There's 
many things I want, babe But I can assure you this is true There's many things I'm looking for But none of them are you When you stagger in a dawn, babe, try to avoid the mirror's gaze. The time once was you could captivate the world, now you're running out of good days. How many futures have you bartered? Whose tomorrows did you sell? Your poison chalice never reached my lips I saw beneath your martyr apparel You overplayed your hand, babe You got nothing that I need I saw right through your plan, babe Let me bring you up to speed There's many things I want, babe But I can assure you this is true There's many things I'm looking for But none of them are you the camera can pick this up, but look at my right forearm. It's just trembling and spasming away. Just playing on memory and prayer. I bet, uh, oh. actually I'll change the subject just a little bit. Why are you creaking? Are you running out there? Well, I should also say, um, I was telling you about the amount of kindness I had received today from um, two people who are strangers they've never seen before in their life and totally you know, um, I mean, if you added up every minute we've spent together it wouldn't come to an hour uh, over the years such kindness but earlier on this morning I sent an email to a Christian 40 years she's been a Christian Telling her that my intestines breaking down, but more importantly, telling her that a young girl that has now got another huge unexplained bruise on her arm. And I got an email back saying, Oh, I don't know what to say. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Bet you all think I'm going to sing the good Christian now. But anyway, so that exemplifies what that song, The Good Christian, is about. I had nothing against people being Christians, but, you know, you live up to it. <laughs> yeah. 
when you're all good being hit about. Oh, that's a shame. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I'm not going to do anything, though. It's not a bad deal, really, is it? You know, because I said to her once, when she'd seen a young boy um, that, um, that had suffered some pretty bad treatment and some pretty bad emotional treatment and this person did not. This person's got a lot of authority. Works for child, the Church Child Protection Agency. <laughs> I chuckled because otherwise I would just vomit. I'm vomiting inside, and that's how come I wrote the good Christian. Um, and this person was saying, "Of course, you don't believe in God, but I do." Well, that's not quite correct, you know. I mean, there may very well be a God, but let's just say that the human race overplays its importance to God. I mean, name me one war that was ever stopped by a prayer, or any natural disaster that was stopped by a prayer. If faith can move mountains, I'm perfectly willing to, I mean, you know, never mind faith move mountains, I mean, you know, there's just a little bank outside there. Put the Pope up against it and see how he does. I said to them, you know, I said, of course, you know, I was trying to be subtle. If God does exist, of course, then he will know all these people that let these children down on their judgment day and they might find themselves getting turned away at the gates. And this person sort of blanched for a minute there because that had never occurred to her. But then, you know, then her, <laughs> her standard argument came back, you know, well, he moves in mysterious ways. Yeah. Pretty good get out of hell free card, huh? Um, but it's not a bad deal, is it? Because I mean, you know, if you're right, then you, you know, you should end up in heaven and paradise. It's not bad. And uh, let's just hope the dinosaurs didn't believe in God as well, because otherwise there might not be much room up there. And if you're wrong, well, what the hell? It ain't gonna matter in any case. And you did get to wander <laughs> being as pious as anything your entire life, as I say. When they do good, they do good. I got nothing against that. But when they do nothing, that's when I pick up my guitar and point out they're doing nothing. And then asking for tax-free charity deductions to do it. Okay, that song was It Ain't You, Babe. I think the song how long did the song last? You reckon the song lasted about five minutes? And the chatty, chatty, chatty lasted about three hours. I'll put some timestamps in. If anyone's watched this all the way from start to finish, I'm very grateful to you. Wherever you two in the world, may you know love, light, peace, happiness and friendship. And to my beautiful children, wherever you two in the world, I love you with all my heart and soul. Every millisecond. <laughs>